This is the path, as I said, Miller Walk to the Maple Grove. And by the way, of all the tours that have been done here, I've, I've watched them all. This is the only one that walks you in the actual path. So you're getting this live from Lake. All right. uh, so anyway, follow me up to the Maple Grove and we'll spend some time there. Over here and just stand for a while. We'll, okay. we'll, we'll, we'll make our way over there. That's okay. Oh no, that, that's a path that they've made. Now keep in mind the paths that have been made. The landscaping is different. We're talking 150 plus years ago. Things have changed quite a bit. But this is the general location. and uh, These aren't the actual trees that were there, but the, this was the area where the maple grove was. And it was a place that Miller didn't only come to pray and meditate that one time when he made that remarkable decision to preach, but this is a place he had come to a lot to, to pray and meditate and hear God's voice. But that eventful day, uh, after his nephew was knocking at the door, this is where he came and wrestled with God and made that decision that is so important for uh, our movement to preach this message. And it was a spark that ignited the Millerite movement. It took place really right here in the place of prayer. That's what this Maple Grove is all about. The power of prayer, the power of surrender. And so that's the lesson I want to impress upon you as you, you're here in the actual place where it happened. Um, to experience the power of surrender. And there may be some things that you need to surrender now in your own life to God. And so what I'm going to do is give you an opportunity, a moment of silence, a few moments here in this place to just lift your own heart up to God. Talk, talk to Him about whatever's on your mind, Maybe there are some things you need to surrender. In fact, there's probably something every single one of us need to surrender to Him. Maybe some big things, maybe some small things. But this is a place where uh, one soul surrendered to God. It made a profound difference. And your surrender can too. So let's just take a few moments of just silence, silent prayer. Uh, if you want to bow your heads and close your eyes, that's fine. You may just want to look up around and just feel the, the presence, the significance of this place. That's fine. I'm just going to give you a few, few minutes of silence and then, then I'll close a prayer.
Lord, you've listened to our thoughts, our prayers, our surrender, our struggle to surrender. You know the issues in each one of our hearts. As you did a great work in William Miller's heart in this very place a long time ago, we ask that you would do a work in our hearts today, now, as we surrender to you, as we feel this brief burst of warmth on our bodies from the sunshine. You know you're speaking to us now. So we surrender to you, Lord, to your will for our lives. As Miller said yes long ago. We say yes now to you. May that be each one's experience. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, let's uh, go. That is one of the kitchen rocks. This is a, a popular spot on the Miller Farm. It's known as Ascension Rock. It's a geological formation that was here during Miller's years. Imagine all these trees are not here except the maple grove. And uh, this, this really stands out. And Miller doesn't say anything about it. And really, to be honest, to him it was probably a pain. Because as a farmer, this is an area he couldn't farm. And so he probably wishes it wasn't here. But over the years, uh, I'm sure the family did various things with it. But we do know that on the day of the disappointment, October 22, <coughs> a number of the Millerites and friends of the family that were here on the farm waiting for Jesus to come stood on this rock. And they looked up to the skies here waiting for Jesus to come. And later on, they called it Ascension Rock not to be associated with the false myth of Ascension Rose, but a place where they look for Christ to come. So it's a famous spot. Uh, it is a place that I understand geologists continue to come and study. It's kind of a unique formation here. There's lots of granite rock in this whole area, but this particular formation that stands out above the ground is, is unique, as I understand it, and so it's a place that even geologists come to today to study. But we know it as Ascension Rock, and it's a great place to come. And when we have communion service, some of you, if you want to, it is chilly, but if you want to, you can come out here and wash your partner's feet on Ascension Rock. What I like about it is the vistas that you have. See the roll, look at the sun shining on the hills over there. And you have that area of grass on the immediate hill, and then the distant hills. It's just really beautiful. They've done a lot of landscaping and cleared out a lot of the brush here. Several years ago, there was more trees there. But obviously there's continuing landscape. The property down there where the woods are, that does belong to the to the Adventist Heritage Ministries that owns this farm now. And again, if you want, if you guys will go out there, you will see some of these uh, rock fences that were put up by Miller and his family. They haven't moved for all these years, these decades, over a century and a half. So really cool stuff out there. So that's my this is my favorite spot, mainly because of the, the view. It's better than the view on, on the... Uh, on the house on that side because you can actually see the hills. So when I come here, I've come here and uh, been had privilege of staying overnight. And uh, I come here and, and have devotions and, and prayer, and it's just a really neat place. So this is Ascension Rock. You probably heard of it. Maybe this is your first time here. And here we are at the William Miller Chapel. See a really cool marker here? It says William Miller Chapel, built in 1848 by Adventist 
Dr. William Miller, this chapel was placed on the National Register in 1975. It's a really, really cool building here. But yeah, folks, it is just really cool to explore this, um, the William L. Miller Farm and the chapel. Um, really neat to be here. Um, hope you have enjoyed learning about William Miller here. And, um, yeah, so had a lot of fun doing some, having a communion service, very touching. Really enjoyed that in the chapel. Did some good Advent singing. Um, just neat to see the locations where such major Adventist history occurred. I mean, to be at the William Miller Farm, to be where Miller in that maple grove went and struggled with the Lord after he had made a deal and then the Lord came through and William Miller finally surrendered his heart to the Lord and preached for God. To be on Ascension Rock where William Miller and several of his followers, they were all over the world, but, or nation, several of his followers stood on October 22, 1844, waiting for the Lord to come. Because through a lot of um, careful calculations, they really did think that, based on some prophecies, that, the, that Jesus was supposed to come on October 22, 1844. It turns out later, um, studies showed that they had the date right, that something very important was happening on October 22, but they had the event wrong. Jesus wasn't coming to earth at that time, but he was actually going into the most holy place of the heavenly sanctuary. But anyway, it is just so cool to be here. I hope you're enjoying this video just as much as I am having fun being here. Alright, here is the, uh, his wife, Lucy. Of course, here is William Miller. You remember what it said here about the text from Daniel. Here's a uh, view of Daniel 12. There is his parents. His father fought in the Revolutionary War. So he's got a long history in, in American battles, the War of 1812 and the Revolutionary uh, battles, colonial battles. So quite a history. This is a really neat place um, for Adventists because of a statement Ellen White made. And it's very interesting, William Miller did not embrace the Sabbath or the Three Angels' messages. He followed his good friend, Joshua V. Himes. And before I read this, let me just say something about Himes. Toward the end of his life, Joshua Himes and Ellen White started corresponding with one another. Himes was dying of cancer, and he actually went to get treated at the Battle Creek Sanitarium with Kellogg, mm -hmm. John Harvey Kellogg. Mm -hmm. And he was so impressed with Seventh-day Adventist, mm -hmm. although he never became a Seventh-day Adventist, he gave a large donation to the work of Seventh-day Adventists in Australia. He liked our work because we believed so strongly in the Second Coming. And Ellen White strongly endorsed Himes and wrote him a letter responding to his gift and acknowledge his Christian experience and his belief in the Second Advent. And yet here's a man who rejected the Sabbath and rejected the Three Angels' messages, yet she endorsed his Christianity, acknowledged his belief in the Second Coming. And I, again, I find that so significant about Ellen White that she recognized other people's Christianity even though it was different from ours. And she leads the way for us that is how we should respond to other Christians. So, shortly after the disappointment, Himes, he established that the rejectionist movement I told you about, that's what I called it, that you, you heard him describe the three groups in the video today, and the first group was led by Joshua Himes. Miller followed with his friend Joshua Himes. Himes had been there as his right-hand man all the way through. How could he turn away from one who had been so strong a supporter and such a dear friend during this time? So in that background, Ellen White makes this most interesting statement. There's two paragraphs I'm going to read. If William Miller could have seen the light, and by the way, this is in Spiritual Gifts, Volume 1, where she, the latter half where she covers the, the history of the movement up until uh, the mid-1800s. 
if William Miller could have seen the light of the third message, that's the third angel's message, many things which looked dark and mysterious to him would have been explained. His brethren profess such deep love and interest for him. That's Joshua Himes, other Millerite leaders. He thought he could not tear away from them. His heart would incline towards the truth. But then he looked at his brethren. They opposed it. Could he tear away from those who had stood side by side and shoulder with him in proclaiming Jesus' coming? He thought they surely would not lead him astray. One thing Himes did is keep the movement free of fanatical ideas. But the problem with that is he rejected all manifestations of prophecy and visions. So he rejected young Ellen Harmon's vision, although later on they would become friends through correspondence, years, decades later. And here's this final paragraph, which contains a very important statement related to this spot. God suffered him, William Miller, to come under the power of Satan and death to have dominion over him. And by the power of Satan, he, she means the dominion of death. He hid him in the grave, away from those who were constantly drawing him from God. Moses erred just as he was about to enter the promised land. So also I saw that William Miller erred as he was soon to enter the heavenly Canaan in suffering his influence to go against the truth. Others led him to this. Others must account for it. And here's this often quoted statement. But angels watch the precious dust of this servant of God, and he will come forth at the sound of the last trump. Amen. That's cool. We'll see William Miller in heaven. Amen. He's one of my favorite characters in Edmund's history. Amen. I, I think I may go after him before Ellen White. <laughs> Shake his hand. So anyway, angels watch the dust of this precious servant of God. So that's the significance of this gravesite. Ah, I mean, yes. in terms of our, uh, like our places that we'll see, this is our last site. <laughs> and then we'll uh, go eat and go home. Amen. But it's uh, good to have a closing prayer for everything. And thank God for the blessing, yeah, cool. what we've experienced. Everybody here, let's bow our heads for prayer. <laughs> Heavenly Father, we are so thankful for the journey you've brought us on together. This adventure we've shared in these historic places relating to our own Adventist history. We want to thank you for a number of things. First of all, for the traveling mercies, for our good bus drivers. We want to thank you for the weather you gave us. No rain. That was so nice, Lord. Thank you. Thank you for the good food, the good places we stay, the people that we've met. And above all, for your spirit that has been with us through this entire time, speaking to each one of us individually, and for the angels that have hovered around, and for all of these people and these places and what they mean. Thank you, O oh Lord. And as we leave and travel back tonight, we ask for traveling mercies all the way back home. Keep our drivers alert and bless us. But Lord, Many of us have expressed a spiritual revival in our hearts as a result of this tour. We pray that, that we would not lose that experience, that those that have had a revival in their hearts would maintain that, and you and you alone can help them do that. So keep this experience alive in our hearts in the days and years ahead, that we would never forget this rich heritage you've given us as a people and the experience you've given us on this tour. So bless us each to that end, I pray. We surrender our lives to you just now. Thanks for our heritage. In Jesus' name, amen. The I know I've probably said it a billion times before, but this has just such been a fun place to visit. And every place, site that we visit has such a unique charm, but to be in the study where William Miller 
studied the Bible and God gave him those insights to be walking the very path like I am right now out to the Maple Grove where William Miller fought with God after he bargained with God and God held up his end of the bargain and but then where William Miller surrendered to God and he he preached for God and to see Ascension Rock it's just where Miller and his friends so faithfully waited for Christ to come is just so amazing so faith building to be here hope you have really enjoyed this video I know I have be sure to check out more of my videos at youtube.com slash tnphotobook and until next time this is geocacher tnphotobook signing out I am very much having a blast for the past <laughs>